Okay. Okay. Uh, hello. I'm Andreu. I'm an industrial PhD uh, here in UPC and Automatic TV there in MediaPro. And I'm going to present you uh, to talk about the object detection task. So uh, these slides and everything has made by Amaya and Miriam, who has very nice lectures online. So if you want to check them out, uh, they are very good. And well, let me start. Uh, so, so object detection is a traditional like task in computer vision. And uh, it's basically the task of detecting all the objects in an image and uh, assigning them a bounding box and a label, OK? So real quick, um, now you have already uh, done the image classification problem with Chavi. And uh, we will treat the object detection as a similar task. So instead of having to, uh, to classify the whole image, as a, for instance, dog or whatever, we will classify each crop of uh, an image. We will take some crops and classify them and uh, to have all the detections in the um, in the image, right? So, for instance, we try to classify these, and our classifier says, okay, there's nothing here, it's background, so it's okay, it's correct. When it stands here, it classifies a cat, so okay, it's also correct, but having, like, using the same approach, the same sliding window pr approach, so this is a dog? No, right? Because the bounding box doesn't fill the dog. So the classifier correctly says, okay, this is not a dog. So what do we need in order to detect every object in, the, in an image? So we will need several, uh, several uh, bounding boxes around uh, all the objects, all the possible objects, right? So we would have to have uh, many positions and many scales and many aspect ratios, okay? So for instance, this cat, okay, we had the correct uh, scale and, uh, for, and bounding box for this cat, but not for the dog, right? So if you have a like, very fast classifier, you could use this technique. Just try like, uh, blindly every position and then uh, classify every position. And then you would have like, the, where are the objects located. But as we are using deep neural networks, um, and they are quite expensive in terms of uh, computation, so we cannot, like, OK, now we can, and later on I will uh, explain you, but let's say that we cannot uh, test every location, right? So the, uh, the thing we should do here is to uh, choose wisely which regions are we going to test instead of like, testing everything uh, blindly, OK? Before that, I will uh, uh, just present you some data sets that are used for object detection, which are Pascal, uh, which has 20 categories and more like uh, bigger data sets like Coco and ImageNet. Okay, so if you want to play with them, uh, just you have them here. In object detection, we will differentiate between two categories. One, the first one is the proposal-based methods, which are, which are based on having a, an algorithm that will propose these bounding boxes instead of having like that explosion of bounding boxes we saw, and the proposal-free methods that they. They don't rely on any methods that makes the proposals. So for the first thing, the proposal methods. So the idea is to find some kind of blobby regions that uh, allow us uh, to not to have to check for all the places and different aspect ratios of the bounding boxes for the whole image. So for instance, in this case, we would take like the dog, the cat, some flowers, maybe the eyes, the nose, but we would not take, for instance, this patch here or another patch that would only add a computational thing, and we don't really want that. Right? So how to uh, make these regions proposals? Uh, these regions proposals can be done uh, with a selective say, a search or uh, MCG, multiscale combinational grouping, which are like uh, segmentation, uh, hierarchical segmentation tasks, uh, or methods, sorry. And in this case, for instance, if we want to uh, get the cow or the, sti or the post or everything like that, we just have to uh, group um, uh, super pixels, which are unions of uh, pixels. And we keep grouping them in a hierarchical manner, and then we start taking some regions of interest, like 
this code here, it's maybe some region here, and this code here is another region, okay? So basically you take uh, the regions of interest and then take the bounding box around them and use it as a proposal, yeah? So the first one that used uh, the neural nets for this object detection task was uh, RCNN, which stands for Region uh, Convolutional Neural Network, and it was made uh, in uh, 2014 with uh, Girsi et al. And what they did basically, they extract region proposals with that method that I just uh, told you. And then for every region proposal, they classified with a neural network uh, which class was it, okay? They had to do this wrapping thing because you have some uh, fully connected layers in the end, so you, you have to have like the same input so they, the program does not explode, right? So basically it's this idea. Oh yeah, f uh, sorry, finally, instead of like having a, a softmax classifier or a multi-layer per perceptron, they trained an SVM, which stands for support vector machine, okay? And yeah, um, this is what you would like to have, but instead you have like 2,000 proposals, right, from this, uh, from this proposal uh, algorithm. So for every proposal, you have to have an output, okay? What do you do to like have this uh, nice output instead of this one? You do some score thresholding, like for instance, this is not a TV, right? So the probability of being a TV, okay, maybe you will assign a probability, it will be like the highest one, but it will not be high, uh, maybe 0, 0 0.3, okay? So you just take it out. And also you do the non-maximum suppression, which is basically that you take, uh, you f if you have several uh, detections here f uh, for horse, because you would have like several uh, proposals for horse, you take the, the, the one with the highest score and then just erase the other ones based on intersection over union or some other thing, okay? Uh, so yeah, basically they beat everyone else with these. So these two didn't use uh, deep neural networks and well, this is the same, but with some other uh, characteristics, like this BGG16 that you saw that Xavi explained you. So yeah, they just uh, beat everyone. Um, but the problems that it had is like, it's a slow at test time because for every region proposal, you have to do an inference of the network, right? And also la the ESVM, um, does not allow backpropagation, so the weights of the network are fixed. Um, so the, the weights of the network w were not like, actually, uh, like uh, actualized with the, with the results of the network. So they like, extended the work into a fast RCN, RCNN, which uh, tries to solve the two problems. The first one, which is as low at test time, is because you had to do like many inferences of, uh, for every uh, region proposal. And in this case, what you do is just do an inference of the image directly. And then instead of like cropping, like cropping in the image and then passing through the network, they crop into the directly into the feature space. Okay, to do so, so we have two fully connected layers, do you remember? And like we should transform somehow this into like warp it somehow so that it fits into the two fully, uh, to the fully con uh, connected layers, okay? How do they do that? With a ROI uh, pooling layer that stands for region of interest pooling layer. Uh, where basically uh, you have the activation map here and then you map the object proposal uh, that you had to the activation map. And then uh, let's, th like, let's imagine that we want a five by five grid so they just match it there and they did a max pooling in order to uh, keep the, the ratio that want, they wanted. So you can connect it to the fully connected layers and everything works, okay? The second problem was that the, uh, if they trained uh, the ESVMs, they couldn't like back propagate it through the network. So what they did is uh, to add a softmax layer here that it was uh, just assigned the, uh, uh, probability like, uh, that could be trained in a end into in an end to end fashion, and then a bounding box regressor that uh, adapted like the 
the object proposals to actually fit the object that they want. So with these two modifications, they passed from RCNN to fast RCNN, which is like fast. And uh, yeah, but the thing is that they had another problem, right? You see here the numbers are very beautiful, but it had a problem which is that it still relied on object proposals uh, and another algorithm to generate object proposals. And this algorithm, like before, okay, before it was uh, 47 seconds and it didn't matter that much, like two seconds or not that much, but, but from 0 0.32 to two seconds, like it mattered a lot, right? So to solve this task, they proposed the faster RCNN, which is basically the same like this is the faster CNN, but they proposed this region proposal network. This region proposal network is a network inside the network that what does is to propose regions based on a deep learning architecture, right? So, um, so they, they could train it like end to end and it will be fast. How does this region proposal network work? So basically uh, what you have, this is the feature map, like you pass through the a deep neural network and you have a feature map. And then in that feature map, you just do a sliding window with several anchor boxes. What are these anchor boxes? These anchor boxes are, um, are used to not to have to uh, invent like the bounding box from zero. So instead of like having to invent like, I don't know, one point here, if this is 1.5, you only have to extract 0.5. Right, so they say it, uh, the network converged better with these anchor boxes here. So, for uh, so uh, with a sliding window, what you do is this: you try every anchor box, and from every anchor box, uh, you do uh, you uh, give a certain objectness score, which is this uh, two score. Like K stands for K anchor boxes. Don't imagine that it's 2,000. I imagined it, and I was like, what? Uh, so, and it will stand uh, so, uh, for uh, it's an object or not, and then the 2k coordinates uh, for every anchor box we will have a coordinate, like a center and a width and a height. So, with this, they have, well, they had everything here. Uh, they didn't have to uh, rely on a, uh, an algorithm like external algorithm for generating these proposals. And uh, they had everything end-to-end -end trainable, very fast and very nice, okay? Um, finally, well, they added some uh, module, some uh, branch, extra branch, that instead of only doing the detection, it also did the, the, um, the segmentation of the image. And basically, they they, stay, uh, like, uh, they saw that training for both segmentation and detection, it helped both tasks at the same time, both improved. So they have a very nice Git, if you want to check, it's uh, quite nice, if you're interested. Okay, so the proposal-based methods were uh, based basically on that you had some object proposals, and then you classify each object the proposal um, passing it uh, through the network, okay? So let's see what the proposal-free methods are. Um, so we had this problem that, uh, that we had like many bounding boxes and we didn't have the computational capacity to handle them, but now the hardware uh, improved a lot and uh, it's able, able to paralyze the, the computation, so now this can be used, okay? This guy, uh, Joseph Redmond, did the YOLO, uh, you only look once, and that does both things, at, uh, both, both things at the same time. It gives a class probability for every uh, like place in the image and also gives a bonding box regression. How, does, uh, how do they do that? Um, basically, they have like a fully, uh, fully, uh, sorry, fully anything, a convolutional net neural network, here a fully connected layer, and then a seven by seven by 30, that uh, now I'm going to explain what it means, um, output, okay? 
and then for this output, uh, they um, for this output, which is this one, uh, they give uh, two two possible bounding boxes, which have some probability of being an object, and uh, x, y with an height, and another uh, bounding box, and for uh, every cell in the grid they give the probability of, uh, the conditional probability of being a certain class given their uh, objectness. So they used uh, two bounding boxes, they say, because uh, in training time they used, uh, uh, they assign a bounding box to, uh, to uh, types of objects and uh, other bounding boxes to other types of, of objects. So they say that both bounding boxes like learn somehow uh, the appearance of the objects in the data set. Um, so after them came the single shot multi box detector, which like did basically the same but in multi scale. Right here, we saw that uh, Yolo um, just outputs the the uh, the detections on like the, the last layer, and the SSD outputs at multiple scales. So for instance, SSD would be better on smaller objects, right? Because if you come to here, you have many, many max poolings and the, and, uh, the field of view of the neurons. Here, uh, they like, tend to see bigger objects and here they can recognize like, um, simple patterns and smaller objects. So yeah, if you see the MAP, this is 72 against 63. So it worked uh, quite much better, but then YOLO, um, did the version two, which is uh, Yolo 9000, uh, 9000, which basically they uh, try, like they did this ablation study, which they tried many state-of-the-art things. But uh, I think a great, uh, a big thing that they did, like maybe it went uh, worse, but making the network fully convolutional and making use of the anchor boxes uh, later on, it helped a lot. Uh, making something fully convolutional means that you don't have to uh, think about the, the, the image input size because the, the network is fully convolutional. So it's all based on convolutional filters, right? So it's very nice. And finally, the YOLO uh, version 3, which works at multi-scale, it has like more things. Version multi-scale, like uh, uh, they uh, gave another a new uh, neural network which used the residual blocks and skip connections. And yeah, it works quite nice. They also have like the uh, Git repo. And also, yeah, they made it all in C. So it's quite fast. But if you want to change something from this architecture, it's a little bit of a nightmare. And finally, I'll talk about RetinaNet, which is uh, made also by the guys from RCNN and all that, which, well, the architecture itself, it uses a feature pyramid net. I, th I, I think this is not from theirs, like it's another architecture that they took. And it's the typical uh, like bounding box regressor and classify and classifying. But the interesting part uh, about the retina net, in my opinion, is that um, they uh, see a problem in one stage detectors because they are much faster than the two-stage detector, but uh, when I say two-stage detector, it's like the uh, proposal-based methods, and one-stage detector is a, a free proposal uh, methods, okay? So, um, yeah, the two-stage uh, two detectors work like better than the one-stage detector, but the one-stage detector goes much, much faster because it, has, it doesn't have to rely on this uh, object proposal stage. So, but why it worked uh, worse? Because in the one stage object detector, you have all, all these, all these um, possibilities of images that are classified as background, but they tend to, um, uh, they tend to like, uh, get the loss, like all the attention of the loss function, uh, if that makes any sense. So, um, what they say is, okay, basically, basically, if you have like classified something correctly, just like put it, don't, don't give it, don't, um, 
don't give it to the loss, okay? So basically, if you have already classified something good, then it's okay. Just don't take it in, into account uh, in order to uh, modify the weights and uh, backpropagate the gradients. So this is, for me, it's the like, basic idea of this paper. It works quite fine. It's uh, very interesting. So as an overview, uh, you have here the inference time, and you have the YOLO and the uh, retina net. Well, it's just some numbers, but they are here for you to check if you want. So as a summary, well, I explained these proposal-based methods and proposal-free methods. And uh, if you have any questions, I will uh, try to answer them.